Hi, Senator Smith. How are you? Well, I'm glad to have a chance to be with you, even though it is uh, not, for, not, not, not physically together. Right. Well, thank you for taking a minute. I know you're about to attend the memorial for uh, George Floyd. What's on your mind right now? What are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking first about how, in some ways, this is a funeral that is like any funeral in the sense that the people that love George Floyd, that knew him, are coming together to celebrate his life and to talk about what they loved about him. And I've come to understand how loved he was by so many people, especially his family. But this is also so much bigger than just one person. And in this moment, there is an opportunity for us to look in the face the systemic racism and police violence that is a scourge on our community and communities all over the country. We can look and see how that connects to the racism and all of the other systems in our country, education and health care. And we can commit ourselves to a new sense of purpose, but not just purpose, but action. And so I think there is an important moment here to move forward with decisiveness on what we know we need to do so that the police department in Minneapolis and around police departments around the country are truly protecting, defending all of the people, including black and brown people that, to, that, that run from police departments and run from police officers rather than looking to them for safety. Do you think uh, that feeling is shared across the state of Minnesota? I think that conversation is being had at the neighborhood and community level. But there's a skepticism beneath that because people are saying we've been here before. What do you think? How do you convince people that this time can be different? We have been here before. A couple of days ago, I spoke with Philando's mother, Valerie Castile, and her sense of of heartbreak that we were all here together on this issue. We cannot let that happen again. Our country cannot survive. I do not believe our country cannot survive another turning of the page in a moment like this. And I believe that if you look around the state and around the country and around the world, that people are are galvanized by this, but we can't waste that, right? We have to use that to get action and change. And as I look to to going back to Washington on Monday, those are the things that I'm going to be looking to work on, specific, tangible things. It's not like we don't know what to do here. We know what to do. We need a national registry of police officers who have abused their powers and who have oppressed black and brown communities so that they can't move from one department to another. We need to change the rules that protect police officers from unreasonable use of force, and we can do that. We know how to do that. We need to permanently ban the, the, the practices that some departments use, including our own Minneapolis Police Department, um, that, 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 that damage and kill people. And those are the steps that I am ready to take, that I am intending to take next week, working with my colleagues, Cory Booker and Kamala Harris, and other members of the Congressional Black Caucus um, who, who are ready to move forward. In the black community, Senator, we look at this as related to the impact of COVID-19 on our community as well. Structurally disadvantaged, structurally um, uh, uh, vulnerable, and, and, and systemically uh, yes. at risk. What's the relationship as you see it, and how do we apply a criminal justice or a justice and accountability solution practice to other areas where there are structural flaws in our relationships. Well, you and I talked about this some the last time we spoke a couple of weeks ago and how we have um, these systemic challenges with um, racism and inequity that existed. Then you have the tragedy of the COVID epidemic, which is decimating black and brown communities, both economically and from a health perspective. And then the tragedy of this murder of George Floyd. And we have to um, specifically, as we look at our response to COVID-19, think about and then get resources to the communities that are disproportionately affected. So here's one example of this. We are going to be, there is lots of work that is happening on preparing a vaccine so that um, 
so that we can we can finally put an end to COVID. This might take a while, but we need to be ready now and moving forward to make sure that that vaccine gets first to communities that are disproportionately affected, first to people that have been essential workers and have therefore been putting themselves and their families um, in harm's way. That's one tangible example of how we can take the moment of the COVID epidemic and direct our resources specifically to um, African American communities, indigenous communities um, that are uh, that have been most directly impacted by this. Great. Senator, thank you so much. Uh, I, I have more questions, but no time is not right. <laughs> but this is a great conversation again, and thank you so much. Uh, continued success in your, your work. And I share uh, the sorrow that you have expressed uh, for the um, George Floyd family and for our community. Uh, this is really a moment of tra tragedy, but I'm sure you believe we, we have um, some um, opportunities ahead that we have to simply be prepared to move toward with courage and conviction. Thank you so much, Al. And we do have opportunities ahead, and we cannot squander this tragedy uh, to go back to um, the old way of doing things. Senator, thank you so much. Take care. Thank, thank you.